Hi everyone, it's Alicia here from the Tackle Share program, and I'm here in Port Hope with Ben Teske, the coordinator for the Atlantic Salmon Restoration Program. And he's gonna tell you a little bit about Atlantic Salmon and what we're doing to reintroduce them. Hey everybody, thank you Alicia. Um, so yeah, my name is Ben Teske and I'm with the Bring Back the Salmon Program, which is also known as the Lake Ontario Atlantic Salmon Restoration Program. And I have here Sandy. And Sandy is a replica of an Atlantic Salmon. So Atlantic salmon used to be very, very abundant in the Lake Ontario watershed. And this fish came from, of course, the Atlantic Ocean. And they came into what is now Lake Ontario about 12,000 years ago. And the habitat here suited them and their population grew. And they became very, very abundant. They became very important for indigenous people living in this region. And they were also really important for early European settlers that came to this area. In fact, many of those European settlers talked about just how many of these fish, of Atlantic salmon there were, um, in this region. And there are some stories that go along the lines of that you could walk across the rivers on the backs of these fish. There were just so many of them. But also, with uh, European settlement, also came some changes to the landscape. So the European settlers came and they started to alter the habitat that this fish depends on. So this fish is, lays its eggs in, in rivers like this in gravel, in gravel beds, in nests, which we call reds. So it uses its big powerful tail and it makes a little depression in the, in the gravel and it lays its eggs. The male comes along and fertilizes those eggs and the young fish grow in that cold water stream. Very important part of it, it's a cold water stream. And once those fish get large enough, they'll swim down river and they will go out into the lake where they'll start to eat um, other types of fish and they'll grow big like Sandy here. And then they'll get to a point when it's time to spawn again. When they'll turn around and they come back generally to the same spot that they came from. And this is an amazing process because they'll swim all the way around Lake Ontario and they'll find their way back using this really powerful nose of theirs. They've got an extremely great sense of smell, about a thousand times that of a dog's. And they can smell their way back to the good spawning grounds and lay their eggs again. So the fish can come up some really powerful rivers to get back to those spawning grounds using this really powerful tail. And they can swim up against some pretty powerful pushy water up rapids and even jump up to three meters high over small waterfalls. And this gives the Atlantic salmon the nickname of the leaper. So they'll get back to those spawning grounds and lay their eggs again. But with European settlement, there came degradation to the habitat. And so in, in a major way, it was the deforestation, so the cutting of our forests, which you can see here, we've got nice shaded spots because of the trees. So the trees help to keep the water cold. The trees also help to regulate the water table by slowing down water uh, rainfall and also helping that to be released in lower times and drier times. So it keeps the, keeps the river from getting really high and it keeps the river from getting really low. Um, also, it was, it was the destruction of wetlands that also helps to regulate those, that water table as well. Then secondly, so degradation of habitat was the first reason. Secondly, the damming of rivers. So European settlers were looking for ways to make power and at that time it was just a mechanical power turning wheels to do things like mill grains take logs and mill them into lumber um, and also to make other things like textiles and to do that they would build a dam to hold the water back and force it over a big wheel to turn and make that mechanical energy and those dams were often more than three meters high and so the fish couldn't get back over those dams and get back to the spawning grounds to lay their eggs again. So it really disrupted the reproduction of the fish. There was also 
overfishing. There was more and more people that moved into this area and they were harvesting lots and lots of fish. And you can imagine we've got less fish being produced and we've got more people taking it. It's not a good recipe for success for this species. And then there was also some pollution that happened as well. And those four reasons combined to make this fish go from extremely abundant to completely gone, extirpated, which means locally extinct, by 1898. So now the Bring Back the Salmon program is restoring this valuable species back to the Lake Ontario watershed. And we're doing that through four ways. So first of all, we don't have Atlantic salmon in the Lake Ontario watershed to just help their population grow. We've had to bring them in from other regions where there still are Atlantic salmon. So we are producing and then stocking fish back into the water. So that's the first pillar of our program. The second pillar of our program, which is critical, is restoring the habitat. Restoring the quality of the habitat, so that the fish can survive in it and also restoring the connectivity from the lake to the spawning grounds. Thirdly, we are doing uh, education and outreach, just what I'm doing right here, telling you about this valuable species and about this program. And then our last pillar of the program is research and monitoring, where we're monitoring how our program is doing so that we can have an adaptive approach to the next steps of the program so we can re-establish this valuable species back into the Lake Ontario watershed. These stocked fish that weren't really born here, how do they know where to come back? Yeah, that's a great question. So the fish will imprint um, generally twice. So they'll imprint on uh, the area that their eggs hatch when they hatch out of their eggs, they'll imprint then, um, which of course, if they're, if they're hatched in a hatchery, then they're not gonna be going back to the hatchery. Yeah. Um, but they'll also imprint when they smolt, which is the process of when they leave the river ecosystem and they move down into the lake. So they'll imprint then as well. If I catch a salmon that I think to be an Atlantic salmon. What are some of the key ID features you should look for so that I can tell? And then what do I do if I do catch an Atlantic or believe I've caught an Atlantic? Uh, so, first of all, you want to look at the gill cover. This is a very important part. Uh, the gill cover on the Atlantic salmon, you can see these spots here. On the Chinook, the Coho, and the Rainbow Trout, there are no spots on the gill cover. Uh, the brown trout, which is actually more closely related to the Atlantic salmon than those other salmonids that I just listed. Um, and the brown trout was introduced from Europe into Lake Ontario, so you can also catch brown trout in the Lake Ontario watershed. Um, they also have spots on the gill cover too, um, but the brown trout has a larger mouth. It goes well past the eye, where the Atlantic salmon stops at the eye as well as the brown trout has, now this is a fairly squared off tail here, um, but the Atlantic salmon will often have a, a little bit of a forked tail, um, whereas the brown trout has a very square tail. And this area right here, the caudal peduncle, this is a very key part, because on the Atlantic salmon, it's quite narrow, but on a brown trout, it's really chunky as well as the spotting on the side of the fish here. Generally speaking, the Atlantic salmon doesn't have many spots below the lateral line, which is this line going across here, whereas the brown trout will be spotty down here as well. And we have resources on the Bring Back the Salmon website that you can learn. And if you're fishing for, for salmonids in the Lake Ontario watershed, you really should know that that identification um, because it's important for this program to succeed we need you to know which species you're catching. If I do believe that I've caught an Atlantic salmon what can I do? Uh, well first of all you want to make sure that you're following the regulations so make sure that you know the regulations and follow those regula regulations and if it's if you're releasing that fish to be you know, kind and gentle to the fish and 
release it quickly just to minimize the stress on it and you know maximize the chance of that fish surviving so that it can it can grow and it can reproduce um, as well as we'd love to know in the bring back the salmon program we'd love to know about the fish that you've caught um, so you can go on the bringbackthesalmon.ca website and find our contact email there and then email me ben um, and let me know about the fish that you've caught and if you have a picture of it i would love to see that as well really really appreciate that all right so for more information you can go to bringbackthesalmon.ca and make sure you check out ben's virtual classroom where he talks all about the atlantic salmon classroom hatchery program i'll put a link to that in the description below thanks ben thanks alicia <laughs>